Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Say, when you were a kid, did you like to go sheing? Now, by that, I don't mean chasing the girl next door around the block, but rather the manly art of climbing the nearest snow-capped hill and then returning down said hill on a pair of shees. Of course, you probably know them as skis. Oh, but that's become a peasant term. Now, if you were to use that outmoded expression around the Sun Valley set, they wouldn't know what you were talking about. On the other hand, George Valentine had never heard of sheing, as you will find out in our Let George Do It adventure. It's called Red Spots in the Snow. And you can take it from me. It wasn't borscht. My dear Mr. Valentine, I have never been a violent man. So when I'm threatened, I need a professional to, uh, well, frankly, to act as my bodyguard. I don't expect you to follow me around ostentatiously with drawn revolver, but I will expect continuous protection night and day. You will fly to Snow, Snow Valley, Valley Lodge, Lodge where, where you will be my guest. Oh, George, did you hear that? Snow Valley. Yes, I heard it, Brooksy. Snow Valley is fabulous. The latest, most up-to-date resort in the whole country. I've read the circulars, too. Angel. Oh, we could have a wonderful time there. Well, you'd better finish the letter before you start packing. Oh, where you will be my guest. Uh-huh. I don't think you will find your duties too arduous. There's skating, skiing, dancing, and entertainment. Oh, George, it sounds heavenly. Yes, it does. Who's it from? Oh, it's signed uh, Herbert Judson. Oh. George, do you think it could be... Only one Herbert Judson, I guess. Oh, who'd threaten a famous picture director like Herbert Judson? (laughs) Probably not over half the population of Hollywood. Well, he's handsome, he's famous, he's clever. And quite a lady killer. I was reading about his latest heartthrob in one of the gossip columns. Well, then you don't want to take the case. Oh, I didn't say that. If you'd like a vacation... Well, come to think of it, I'm not invited. The minute Judson sets eyes on you, I'm sure you will be. Oh, thank you. That was a compliment, wasn't it, George? Uh, no comment. Well, write him we'll be there. I'll telegraph him. Hey, I've not made him money. Collect. Oh, George, it'll be wonderful. Skating in the moonlight, dancing under soft lights. Yeah, and Herbert Judson in person. All right, go home and pack, Angel, and don't forget, plenty of woolies. You are listening to Let George Do It. Our adventure will continue in just a moment. Now back to George Valentine and Let George Do It. Good of you to take the morning plane, Valentine. And to bring Miss Brooks. Oh, thank you, Mr. Judson. Mm. After lunch, we'll go out and try the she-run. She? That's the right way to pronounce S-K-I, George. Ah, oh, thanks. You're welcome. Sorry I wasn't here to welcome you when you arrived. Special events on the she-run this morning. Oh, well, that's okay. We spent the time looking at the photograph albums in the lobby. You're on almost every page, Mr. Judson. Oh, yes. The publicity men here, you know. Always snapping off-the-record pictures of well-known people on the she-run. Well, if I may be permitted a pun, there was one she in particular who was posing with you and a good many of the pictures. <laughs> well, all the girls like to have their pictures taken with me. Well, this one was very pretty, in spite of the fact that her dark glasses almost covered her face. Did you ever think of going in for pictures, Miss Brooks? Me? Oh, heavens, no. Oh, really? Extremely photogenic, you know. I can get you uh, a screen test. <clears throat> Incidentally, Mr. Judson... Now, don't worry about your fee, Valentine. It'll be over and above your hotel expenses. Everything's on me. Yeah, well, while we're waiting for lunch, perhaps you'd tell us just how you were threatened. I found this note under the door to my room. Ah. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, words cut out of the newspaper. Better keep your promises if you expect to remain healthy. Is that all? It's enough, isn't it? Uh What promises does it allude to? I haven't the faintest idea. 
I was sure a clever man like you would find a lot of clues in this. Well, I'm not a movie detective, Mr. Judson. Just a troubleshooter who occasionally gets a good idea. Well, whatever the danger is, I'm sure you can cope with it. Mere fact that you're here is very comforting. Ah? Oh, here's little Mary with the succulent viands. You know, Pierre used to be chef at the Samoritz. You're Mr. Valentine, aren't you? Yes, Mary, this is Mr. Valentine. Well, the desk clerk said that this note was left for you. It was Mark deliver at once, so he sent it in. Oh, thank you. Yes, uh, Would you excuse me? Why, uh, certainly. I wonder who's sending me. Uh -huh. Look at this. What is it, George? Just like yours, Mr. Judson. Words cut out of a newspaper. With your advertisement at the top, George. Uh, if this is you, you're wasting your time. A man must pay for his sins, and you can't stop it. Better leave here at once. I won't warn you twice. Well, whoever's sending these threats isn't wasting any time, is he? Say, tell me, have you had any disagreements with anyone here? Why, no. No, nothing of any importance. I had a little argument with Jacques, the she instructor. Maybe you'd better tell me about it. I might find it more important than you think. No, it really isn't anything. Little Mary, the, the waitress here, is quite a she expert. The help, you see, are allowed to use the hill back of the lodge. Jacques and Mary are great friends. Or at least they were until the girl who sings arrived. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're going too fast. The girl who sings? Uh, her name is Jill Drew. She sings during cocktail hour. Hasn't anything to do with the argument I had with Jacques. I mention her because, uh, well, Jacques is infatuated with her and Mary is crazy about Jacques. Quite a little triangle. Well, this trouble you had with Jacques... Well, Mary's quite pretty, as you may have noticed. I uh, have always been on the lookout for photogenic faces. I asked her how she would like to have a screen test... Jacques didn't seem to like the idea. But now that his interests are elsewhere, I'm sure he doesn't care. I'd like to meet this Jacques. Oh, you'll meet him, yes. We'll go up the mountain right after lunch. Well, Miss Brooks, you manage your she's wonderfully. Well, they don't bother me, but that chairlift frightens me. Now, it's really very simple. You just climb aboard one of the chairs as it swings round. You mean those little chairs hanging like a swing are all you have? Well, surely you've been on a she-lift before. <laughs> they didn't have one on the little slope back of the schoolhouse where I learned. <laughs> well, you won't have any trouble. As soon as you get on, you rest your feet on the footboard, and then you pull the bar down in front of you and you're locked in. Well, the wire that it swings on... Suppose it should break. Uh, that wire is good and strong. <laughs> but it goes up so high, and when it stops, you're dangling there. Oh, oh, and this is the girl who couldn't get to Snow Valley fast enough. Mm -hmm. You know, for myself, I've always thought this was a silly sport. 20 minutes to go up, 20 seconds to come down. Well, I thought I could just play around down here. Well, you don't have to come down the she trail if you don't want to. Jacques gives his lessons on that plateau up there at the top. See that space between the trees where the lift goes over the hills? You can watch, Mr. Judson, Angel. Yes, and when you're ready to return to the lodge, you can ride back on the chairlift if you want to. Now, let's see. I'd better take the first chair. Miss, uh, Miss Brooks, you take the next, and Valentine the rear guard. Okay. Well, all right, here goes nothing. I'll show you how it's done. You see how slowly the chairs move? You just jump on and put your shees on the footrest. Pull down the bar, and there you are. See you at the top. Okay, you're next, Angel. I'll help you. On you go. We're awfully high up, George. Yeah, it's a beautiful view, though. I'm afraid to look. I get dizzy. Surely you're not frightened now. We're almost there. And did you ever see a clearer day? Yeah, it is pretty, but those treetops down there look awfully sharp. Oh, don't look down. Look ahead toward that opening between the trees. When we get through there, we'll be only a few feet off the ground. And just beyond, you'll be able to get off. Hey, look back and see how far we've come, Angel. I wish I were an angel. With wings. What's that? Someone in the woods must be hunting. I didn't know they allowed it. They must have hit something, George. Look down there. Red spots in the snow. Hey, that's blood. Hey, good night. Look, Angel, Judson slumped over the bar. He's been shot. Mr. Judson? Someone in the woods there to the left. Hey, Brooksy, look down there. What? Yeah, going down the far side of the hill out of the woods. Someone skiing awfully fast. Yes, and not on the regular ski run. 
That must be the person who shot Mr. Judson, a blue sweater with a yellow band. Too far off to see what he looks like. Oh, I wish this plane contraption had moved faster. I'll phone down the minute we get to the top and see if we can head him off. Hey, hey, you up there. Help Mr. Judson off. He's been hurt. Yes, sir. What happened? Someone shot him from the woods. All right, I'll get him off the chair. Well, someone will have to help me, too. Just a minute, lady. Where will I get him on the ground? Well, wait now. Don't try to jump off. Don't. There. There you are, ma'am. Oh, thanks. George, he seems to be hurt badly. Yeah, okay. I'll be there in a second. All right, give me a hand. There, there you are, sir. Okay. All right, let's have a look at him. Now, phone for the police. Tell them to hold anyone wearing a blue sweater with a yellow band around it. Yes, sir. Shall I send for a doctor, too? Too late for that. Mr. Judson is dead. All right, please, please, folks, keep back. Will you, everyone, keep back? Don't touch him until the police arrive. They'll be here shortly, sir. Did you phone the lodge about the blue sweater with the yellow band? Oh, no, sir. I for, I'm afraid I forgot it. Oh, fine help you are, Buster. You know anyone who has an outfit like that? No, sir. Jacques might know. Well, where is he? Get him. Well, he left a little while ago, just before you arrived. He left? I thought his job was here. Well, he said he had to pick up some supplies in town, and he'd be right back. Hey, Brooksy. Yes, George? Looks as if we have to ski down the hill back there. Are you game? Well, I've never tried a long hill like... Well, whatever you say. All right, come on, then. Now, look, don't let anyone touch the body. No, sir. Hey, you're going the wrong way. The ski run... We're taking the same route the killer took. Come on, Angel, don't break your neck. Oh, George, I'm so glad you care. Oh, you bet I care. Oh, George. All right, I'll need you to help me when we get down. Lots of things that have oh, to be... Oh, George. Come on, hold your hat. Here we go. Well, it's like flying, isn't it, George? Yeah, pretty fast. George, look out, that snowbank. Huh? Be careful. Oh, hey, oh, uh, oh. oh hey, Brooksy, help me out of this, will Are you? Are you all right? Yeah, I guess so. Half the snow in the country went down my neck. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. But it was certainly bumpy. Yeah. Man must have been an expert. Yeah, but he slipped up. Nice of him to leave a trail in the snow for us to follow. Yeah, that's right. Well, come on, what are we waiting for? He's way ahead by now. I know, but we can tell the way he went. Look down, he's right. Get behind that snowbank. We've caught up with our friend, the killer. You are listening to Let George Do It. Our adventure will continue in just a moment. Back to George Valentine. You are invited to Snow Valley Lodge to act as guardian for the well-known Hollywood director, Herbert Judson. And now Judson is dead, shot while riding on the ski lift just in front of you and Claire Brooks. And now that you've followed the suspected killer's trail, you find yourself hiding behind a snowbank trying to avoid being a target. Well, if your name is George Valentine, that's only going to make you more anxious to catch the person who's been doing the shooting. <laughs> Okay, Angel, according to my calculations, that's the last shot in his gun. Be careful, George. Okay, I'll take a look. No sign of anyone. From here on, he followed the road, and there isn't any more trail. Yes, road's too cut up by automobile chains. Well, let's get to the hotel. I want to check a few things before the police begin their inquiry. You check the drying room and ask about blue sweaters and yellow stripes. I'll phone Hollywood and get the latest dope on Judson. Any pay dirt, Brooksy? None. The man in the drying room says there are several people who have sweaters like that, but none of them wore them this morning. Was Jacques one of them? No. Jacques always wears black. Did you talk to Hollywood? Yeah, yeah, I did. Signet Studios was very much upset at the news, naturally. Everyone seemed to like Judson. Due back at the studio next week to make a picture. No recent scandals, no big romance since last year. But one of the newspaper boys said that his death would cause a lot of weeping and wailing among aspiring actresses. Popular, huh? He was always promising to get girls into pictures and never making good. Hey, didn't he ask you if you wanted a screen test? <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> George, 
That note he received warned him he'd better keep his promises. Do you suppose one of the girls... I can't imagine why failure to get a screen test is motive enough for murder. But we mustn't pass up anything. Okay, promise Mary a test. Let's see her. George, do you remember these photo albums we looked at before lunch? Yeah, sure. Judson and his she's. Well, maybe one of them had a dark sweater with a light stripe. Oh. Brooksy, what would I do without you? Well, I hope you couldn't, George. I thought... Here they are. Oh. Anything wrong? Yeah. Someone tore out all the pages from the front of this book. Do you suppose it might have been someone who had a dark sweater with a light stripe? I wouldn't be surprised. Come on, let's find Mary. I beg your pardon. I'm looking for a waitress named Mary. Have you, well, uh... You wouldn't find her here now. She's off in the afternoons. So... Oh, I see. Uh, you're Jill Drew, the singer, aren't you? Yes. My name is Valentine. This is Miss Brooks. Oh, hello. How do you do? You uh, heard about Mr. Judson, I suppose. Yes. Well, I'm asking a few questions before the police arrive. Would you mind telling me if you were one of the girls Mr. Judson promised a screen test to? I hardly knew Mr. Judson. By any chance, do you have a ski outfit? A blue sweater with a yellow stripe? No, I don't ski. I'm engaged to sing and play the piano. Where would I find time to ski? Now, if you don't mind, I have to practice. Yeah, the uh, show must go on, I see. Oh, I'm sorry. I knocked them over to the floor. Sounds like a junk cart. Here, I'll pick them up. They're beautiful bracelets you have, Miss Drew. Rather heavy, aren't they, when you're playing the piano? Oh, I never wear them when I play. But I don't like to leave them in my room. It's marvelous what they can do with costume jewelry these days. My dear young lady, those are real. They're from Elwood's in Beverly Hills. Oh, Singing for your supper must be profitable. Oh, I have admirers. I don't doubt it. Now, if you don't mind... Oh, sure. Must... Sorry to have interrupted your practicing. If you're looking for Mary, you might find her in her room. And where is that? In the annex, back of the main lodge. If she isn't there, she may be skiing on the hill, back of the annex. She's very proficient. <laughs> Mary, you've been crying. Yes, Mr. Valentine. Poor Mr. Judson. You liked him a lot, didn't you? Well, he was always so kind and generous. Next week he was going to take me back to Hollywood with him for a picture test. Well, look, Mary, murder is a serious matter. You're in the dining room a lot. Did you ever hear Mr. Judson in an argument with Jacques? What? No, Mr. Valentine. Well, Jacques would Mary, never... there will be an inquest. You'll be asked questions and you'll get yourself into a lot of trouble if you hide anything. Mr. Judson admitted he and Jock had an argument about you. Well, he only warned Mr. Judson not to make any promises he couldn't keep. And Mr. Judson was going to give me Jacques the test... threatened Mr. Judson? Oh, no, Mr. Valentine. He wasn't a threat. Just a friendly warning. Don't you think you'd better tell us all about it? Well, Jacques and I... Well, he used to be kind of attentive until Miss Drew came. I... I wanted to make him jealous, so I told him about Mr. Judson promising me a chance in pictures. And he warned Mr. Judson not to make any promises he couldn't keep. That was all. Where can I find Jacques when he isn't teaching? Well, if he isn't with Miss Drew, he's usually in his cabin. And that is? Back at the lodge. Jacques doesn't live in the lodge. He has a cabin of his own. It's number 26. Okay, thanks. I'll see you later. seem to be at home. Maybe the door's open. We can try. A man who leaves his door open can't have anything to hide. Usually. Oh, that's a nice cabin. Fireplace and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Quite cozy. Oh, I'd like to have time to look at all the pictures he has on the walls. Well, go ahead and look. Let's see what else there is. These must be his pupils. Mm. Oh, publicity stills. Well, let's see now. The table. In there. Scrap basket. Hmm. What is it, George? This newspaper. I haven't the slightest doubt that both Judson's message and mine were cut right out of this. George, if he wanted to hide it, why didn't he burn it? 
I was thinking the same thing, Angel. I'll keep it anyway. Now let's have a look at the pictures. <laughs> well, Jacques seems to have had his picture taken with every well-known star in Hollywood. To Jacques, who helped me stay on my feet, Grant Cooper. To Jacques, the best there is, Norma Lewis. And here he is with Mr. Judson and Jill Drew. In memory of a happy vacation. George, isn't this like one of the pictures from the book? Uh-huh. Only she isn't wearing the dark glasses here. Mm, she was prettier then. She wasn't posing when we saw her. Well, her sweater has a stripe. Only it's a light sweater with a dark stripe instead of the other way around. Thought she couldn't ski. Doesn't mean you can ski just because you're photographed with them on. George, do you smell something burning? Mm. Yeah, it smells like cloth. Hey, it is, here in the fireplace. No wonder we couldn't locate the missing suit. Where are you going? Well, to get some water to throw in the fire. Hasn't been in the fire very long. I'll get it out with a poker. There we are. Well, it's a shame to spoil this Don't rug, Don't burn but... your hands. I'm getting the water. No, I got it, Angel. Just have to stamp on it a bit more. Look out, George. Huh? Oh, good. Well, what do you know? Blue sweater and yellow stripe, all right. I'm glad we found it before it had time to burn completely. Let's see if there's anything in the pocket. Nothing but what's left of this handkerchief. Hey, his initial, too. Well, that sort of settles it, doesn't it, George? Yeah, perhaps. We'll hold it for the sheriff when he arrives. What are you doing in my room? Oh, uh, <clears throat> hello there. I suppose you're Jacques. Didn't think you'd be back so soon. Evidently, you did not. I ought to turn you over to the police. Well, for the moment, I represent the police. You're lying. Now, listen, Buster. Maybe you don't know that you're the number one suspect for a murder. What's that? <laughs> Good imitation of a man indicating surprise. You think I killed Mr. Judson? Now, look, your ski suit... Oh, that isn't mine. I never had one like that. Your handkerchief was in the pocket. Oh, that isn't mine either. It's... It's none of your business. Now, will you get out of here? Or look must out, I... George. Oh, another bit of evidence, huh? All right. Put that gun down, Buster. Drop it, I say. Drop it, Buster. It isn't loaded. What? Yeah, don't you remember? You used up all the bullets shooting at us. Okay, pick it up carefully, Brooksy, yeah. while I hold our friend here. All the shots have been fired, George. Yeah, I thought so. Come on, Buster. We're going to find the sheriff. Sorry to disturb you again, Miss Drew, but have the police arrived? I haven't seen them, Mr. Valentine. Come along, Jacques. Jill, uh, I... Mr. Valentine, where are you taking, Jacques? We're on our way to the police, Mary. This fool is trying to say that I killed Judson. We found the gun and the ski suit in his room. He tried to burn it. We got there in time. Jacques says the suit is too small for him, and I'm inclined to agree with him. But it wasn't Jacques. He didn't do it. I, I know it. Mary, be quiet. He didn't do it because... Because... I did it. Huh? It does look like a girl's sweater, George. And what's left of the handkerchief looks like a woman's. Mary, are you trying to protect Jock? No, no, I... She might have done it, George. She knows how to ski, and the sweater could fit her. Okay, motive, Angel. Mr. Judson promised her a test in pictures. He hadn't kept his promise. Well, not a very good motive for shooting a man, as I remarked before. Would you say so, Miss Drew? Please, can't you discuss this somewhere else? I have oh, to... Oh, yeah, rehearse. sure, I know, I know. You have to rehearse. We'll only be a minute. And you might be interested in this. Do you think failure to give a girl a screen test is good and sufficient reason to... Mr. Judson made fun of me because Jacques had fallen in love with Miss Drew. Please, leave me out of this. You say you shot him, Mary, huh? Yes. And then came down the other side of the mountain and reached the hotel in time to go to work? That's it, George. And then planted the suit and the newspaper and Jacques' gun back in his room? She tried to burn the suit. Jock's cabin was the only one with a fireplace, and it was only natural that she should return the gun. But she happens to love Jacques is even willing to confess to a crime she didn't commit to save his life. Why would she leave the stuff in his room for the police to find? Well, maybe she was jealous and then changed her mind when she saw he was suspected. Girls in love often do strange things. Oh, yeah, they certainly do. Well, it's an interesting theory, Brooksy. Only if you remember, when we started up the ski lift, Mary was still at the bottom. We just left her in the dining room. She couldn't possibly have reached the top before we did. Yeah, you're a sweet kid, Mary, trying to save the man you love. But it isn't a good idea to get mixed up with the law. Then you think it really was, Jack? Oh, no. No, I agree with you that it was a woman, all right. A woman's sweater, a woman's handkerchief. And do you remember the initial on the handkerchief? Yes. J for Jack. Why not J for Jill? Don't go away, Miss Drew. Oh, this is ridiculous. Is it? We saw your photograph in a blue sweater and a yellow band. 
You destroyed the pictures in the album, but you forgot the one in Jacques' room. But she had on a light sweater with a dark band. The strange peculiarities of photography, Angel. Unless you're using panchromatic film, blue comes out light and yellow comes out dark. And I think when I check with Elwood's and Beverly Hills about those bangles, we'll find that Judson bought them. Yeah, I think we'll find out that they were presents from him before he got tired of her and started sheing elsewhere. All right. All right, I did it. I didn't mean to kill him. I just wanted to frighten him. But he deserved to die. He was a pig. He was always promising women the world and giving them nothing. He even promised to marry me. Then he met this little nobody and treated me like the dirt under his feet. I tried to make him jealous by pretending I cared for Jacques. Uh Uh-huh. Brooksy, I'll turn this little lady over to the sheriff. Phone the jeweler in Beverly Hills. And then I'll meet you back in the lobby. Back to the conclusion of our Let George Do It adventure in just a moment. Well, I was right, Angel. Judson bought those presents and braces for Jill. But, George, did she tear the pictures out of the book so we wouldn't know she could ski? That's right. I don't think she meant to implicate Jacques, but his cabin was the only one near hers that had a fireplace. So when she went there to return his gun, she thought of burning the sweater, which she knew we'd seen from the chairlift. Well, how did you know Jacques didn't do it? Well, he didn't know the gun didn't have any bullets in it, for one thing. And now Mary and Jacques can live happily ever after. (laughs) Can anyone really live happily ever after? Oh, George, you're so cynical. If you don't look out, some girl will take a shot at you for a warning. Not from a ski lift, Angel. The only girl who'd take a shot at me doesn't like dangling from the sky. You have just heard Red Spots in the Snow, another Let George Do It adventure. Robert Bailey was starred as George Valentine, with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Davis Kent wrote the story with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Now this is yours truly inviting you to another visit with Valentine when you'll again hear what happens when you let George do it. (laughs) 